Hi, I'm Dan with the Honeymooners Off-Road Adventures and Homeward for Heroes. We're full-time travelers, and today we're gonna to talk about the Al Cab Expedition 3.1. Uh, we've been living out of this particular tent for the last 10 months. Uh, we've been full-time traveling for the last three years, so we've had a couple of different setups. Um, I really love this Al Cab. It's been probably the best rooftop tent that we've owned. Uh, it's our fourth rooftop tent, and um, the last one that we had was an Alpha 2 which was pretty nice for the most part, but it folded out this way and, and it was, you know, fairly quick setup. I mean, it's, it took me like maybe three minutes to set it up versus the Zayu cab. I undo two latches on the back, push it up, put this in, hook it up there, ladder on, done. Two minutes under. Um, it's been an excellent tent. It's handled the wind the best for us. Uh, we've been in over 50 mile an hour winds. Wasn't that big of a deal because we had the clam or the hard top into the wind it worked out really great we've had uh, 40 mile an hour winds actually hit us from the back um, i'll talk a little bit about that from inside the tent i got some clips during some of those winds uh, but yeah we had a 40 mile an hour plus hit us from the back it handled it really well this this is probably some of the best craftsmanship on a rooftop tent that that we've actually experienced um, we've had a tapui uh, we've had a cbt uh, mount shasta extreme or rugged, whatever it was called. Uh, and then we had that Alpha 2, and now we have the Alu Cab Expedition 3.1. Uh, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the features. So one of the things I wish that uh, I would've known was coming out, because we got this like probably six months before the upgraded model came out, which was the, three, the 3R. So you can see I got a diesel heater here. Um, which with our Alpha, it just went right up into the window side on that because the tent was this way. So with this being our main door, I don't want it to just in there and, and have to mess with it every time we come in and out. But on the 3R, they actually have a port built in right here for your ducting. So you can get away with a shorter hose, which is really nice because having this longer hose, it of course cools things down. And so I got to work the heater a little bit more. Um, so this is also, constructed out of aluminum, so it's lightweight. It's about 190 pounds, uh, but very solid, very solid. And if you look from the front here, you can see uh, it's got actual roof rails on there. I have my solar panel, 200 watts of solar onto it. Um, and, but you know, I've seen people do kayak racks, uh, bike racks and things like that up on there. Uh, this has about roughly a 65 pound lift with the, uh, the shocks on there so you could have up to roughly 65 pounds on the roof and it's still being open and the struts will hold it up now of course if you have something heavy you could just put it down lower over here's what i would recommend on that um, it's got th four very stout um, hinges on it which is really nice and then as you can see from the mounting brackets here they've got the slide rail so it's nice and universal for almost anything that you have um, I do have the original brackets for it. However, I had to reverse them so they didn't quite fit exactly the way they're designed. Because um, normally it actually goes into here and then flares out this way, which works great for their rack system that they have with their cross members. But my cross member is a little bit different because this is a home built trailer. But it still worked, still works out great. Um, and then follow me here to the back. <clears throat> So for power, um, one of the things I do like is that this does have a really nice little power thing inside. Uh, it's a thing that you can unplug. This one actually had the 12 volt like cigarette lighter plug for it that had on the other end so you could plug it into one of those things. Whereas I have mine actually hardwired in. Um, so I always have power up there. Uh, inside the tent, there's a port that has two USBs and then two of the 12 volt cigarette lighter kind of charging points on it. And what's really nice too is that they have a blue LED light thing around it, so it's easier to find in the dark. Um, however, our USB ports didn't last. I think they lasted about six months before they stopped working, but the two 12 volt uh, plugs still work great. And so we just got one of those cigarette lighter kind of plugs for our USB and it's in there working great on that. Okay, so then I'm gonna take you up the ladder here. Yeah. Um, so this ladder is actually 
probably the nicest ladder I've ever seen with the rooftop tent um, because it's actually got the wider platform on it. It still works like the traditional telescoping ladders. All that's kind of the same, but it has these wider pads on here, which really makes it nice. Um, and then as far as the clip in, it's just got a pin on both sides, and but then it's got this little lock lever right here to keep it from slipping out. Um, so there's there's two mounting points. There's a mounting point here, and then of course there's one on the back. Um, and then moving up. So on the door, it's got this Velcro stuff on it, which I'm not really sure why it has Velcro here and on this side, but as you can see, it tore up. It, it actually tore this up within the first month. So now I got a big hole here I got to repair on this door. But one of the things that's kind of a nice, but yet also a something you need to think about is this it's got a dual layer tent so there's a, an inside layer and an outside layer which really helps to keep things warm but what we've been finding is insects especially moths like to get up in there uh, we've had a couple of spiders and things like that to get up in there but it's all double tent so that really helps for the warmth uh, condensation and whatnot like that Okay, so one of the things I really, well, one of the things, one of the many things I love about this tent, um, we have an extra mattress on top of here. This is a Cuomo top um, inflatable mattress. And then we have the uh, original mattress down in there. Um, sleeping bag. So all this actually stays inside of this when I close this all down in here, which makes it really nice. So all I gotta do is take the pillow out and, and then of course you can see our ducting's coming in. That goes out. Surface Pro stays in. They've got these nice pockets in here for you to put stuff. I've got, this is my thermostat for the diesel heater. Um, I did have to add a extra little light to get, you know, for lighting it up because the light is actually way up there. And there is a switch up there, but the other switch is buried underneath the mattresses over here. It's kind of a poor location in my mind. Wish they would come up with making that a little bit more mobile. Plus, it's designed more for people going out that side, which would, you know, if you're on top of a rig, that's probably the side you're going to use. But that's my kitchen side here on this and my awning, so no access there. Uh, the other feature I do like, too, is up here they've got that upper zipper. So that makes it really nice that it'll still stay pretty warm in here, but you can leave that unzipped for the moisture of your breaths. Because we've had that in some extreme times where we've closed it off because it was pretty cold. We didn't have the diesel heater and we got a lot of moisture in here from our breathing. Uh, which, you know, the, the inside walls was all damp and whatnot. But with that unzipped, we don't have that problem at all. And of course, if the diesel heater is running, we don't have a problem with moisture either. So, so one of the things that I see a lot about on the Cab unofficial site, I think it is, or one of the Cab sites in Amman, they always talk about how their mattress gets wet. Um, you know, and they're like, yeah, it's, it's never been open. I opened it up the mattress is wet or, um, you know, I've only used it twice or whatever. Um, what I have, the only t one time that my mattress is wet, this is what I figured out was, was is that when these struts come down, if you don't actually get these walls in when you shut this down, it'll leave a little bit of a uh, pinch on there. So it's actually, the seal is not tight down here. I mean, it's just barely sitting on there. So if you get any sort of water pressure, like if you're driving down the road and it's raining, that's enough pressure to actually snake its way underneath there. Versus now, like when I do it from the back, I actually really push that stuff in as I pull it down and I make sure that this is all pulled up and over in there. Never had a problem with it leaking ever since I figured that part out. So these latches here, there's two of these latches, one on each side to hold it down. Uh, nice and stout latches. However, I have broken both of these before. Um, I don't know if it was just, you know, a, a flaw, you know, a defective latch, or if it was something, that, the way I latched it down, you know? But this is what broke right here. Right. It, it actually broke on one of these corners. Um, but in any case, uh, I reached out to AliCab. They uh, warrantied these, put them in. Um, it was simple in one aspect, but it's a really tight little spot on the inside where the nuts are. So that was kind of the difficult spot was, you know, we had to pull the mattresses out and over there in order to get your hands up into there to try to feed on the nuts. And then with the 
ratchet with an extension and then screw it in from the outside. So it was kind of a little bit of a, a hassle that way. It takes two people to do it. Uh, so if you're by yourself, have fun with that. All right, so I want to take this opportunity to show a little bit about how well this does in the weather. Uh, this morning we've been averaging about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds pretty consistently. Uh, some of the gusts have been up to about 30. Um, and I'm just basing that off of the uh, weather channel things that we have. Um, so I do have this parked uh, more for the long term because I have solar panels on the hard shell. So I have that pointing towards the sun. Well, the wind is actually coming in from the north side. So it's actually hitting the, the soft shell part of the, the tent. And as you can see, it's doing pretty well. We've probably got, you know, 10 mile an hour winds right now going but as you can see there's not a whole lot of movement with it it is a pretty heavy material which is really nice um, so it handles the wind really well it's also makes it pretty quiet uh, one of the things I have done though is that I added these little um, pigtails onto the end of the things to keep them from flapping because that way when they hit they just hit each other a lot and it would click at night and so by adding these on there that helped. The other thing you could do too is just also take them all the way down and then they're not going to make noise either but I kind of always like mine up where it's a little bit easier to to grab on there. Um, as far as how dark does it get in here so like I said it's currently uh, working on 11 o'clock um, so sun's up high very bright outside. I flip the light off up here so you can see it's like total blackness in here. Um, can see you might be able to see a little bit through the zippers there but it's dark and so if you like to sleep in really good tent because we like to sleep in uh, some of the other features that I really like about about the way this is designed in here um, let me open up a window here so we got a little bit more light there are these pockets there's six of these pockets it's really nice for throwing your clothes and and whatever else you want in there. Um, the other thing that I, I did personally is I added another little light down here because it's a lot easier for me to get to than the one that's actually up high. Uh, their switch on that one that's up high is located down here and I got, I got an extra mattress on here but even with the stock mattress you gotta dig down for it. It's just really kind of in a, in a bad place. So we don't really use that light that much. One of the other things that I like too is, is that um, how much space is in here when you shut this down. So basically what I do is I just deflate this air mattress that I have. It's about a three and a half inch fat air mattress where it's got the comb in it. So it, it actually never loses air, which is kind of nice. Unless if you open it up and push the air out. Um, <coughs> So basically I let the air out of the air mattress, I pull my, my pillow out and I can put this shell down and leave all my bedding. I even leave my uh, little Surface Pro up here where we watch movies, leave that in here. Um, we could leave some clothes and stuff in here. There's, there's lots of room in here which is pretty nice. As you can see right now from this outside we got some pretty good miles. It's probably hitting up to about a 20 mile an hour wind right now and you can see how well just even that rain fly is doing. Um, the, if I, I used to have the rain fly up on this other wall, but due to the wind coming through, it kind of worked like a parachute, and so I rolled that one up, and this tent is handling this wind excellent. The craftsmanship of this LU cab, I'm really impressed with. The only thing that I'm not really that impressed with outside of the, the way the light switch is, is with the doors, they unzip and then they come down. So then you're kind of having to negotiate over the top of the uh, doors. Uh, for me, it's not that big of a deal. I just throw it out and I can get to the ladder because I got longer legs, but my wife on the other hand, she's got shorter legs. And so it's gotta be up, but then she's scooching over it. So you can either roll this up, I've done that, or just kind of lay on it. Um, over the long term, you know, I'm thinking it might cause some issues with the door, but so far it hasn't. And I've really put a lot of thought in of what they could do better. But, you know, it's, it seems like right now they have the best solution that I could even think of, so. So it's time to take this down. So I'm gonna show you how nice and easy it is. Um, first off, if you look up in here, 
<clears throat> I'm leaving the sleeping bag in. I have an air mattress in here that's deflated, of course. We've got our little TV Surface Pro thing up there. We've got some clothes, as you can see, kind of bundled up in there. Our little thermostat stays up in there. I mean, everything just stays up in here. Basically, we pull the pillow out. So now for tearing down, I always just throw that up there. And of course, undo this guy. Okay, now here's where a lot of people make a mistake and they say that the seal leaks is that if you pull it from the back, oops, I forgot to put the little spongy thing up here. And of course it's in my ladder. Uh, but by these struts, what I was talking about earlier, a lot of times people will leave fabric out because I used to like get this thing almost down like this and then I'd walk around and try to tuck. Well, I, I, that was the one time where I got that leak, whereas now I just do it from the back. If I just pull everything in nice and good. It'll actually just shut down really nice and easy. just like that it's all closed up now of course I accidentally got the little thing out here that I got opened up and pull the ladder away but just like that nice and simple so in conclusion of this review on the IU cab expedition 3.1 uh, number one would I buy it again yes I would buy it again um, being a full-time traveler yes it is forty five hundred dollars so it's pretty expensive for somebody that's going out for the weekend but for us as much as we use it it's worth every penny of that forty five hundred dollars uh, as compared to the other previous tents that I've had the tough stuff alpha 2 which at the time was about two thousand um, dollars that tent was priced pretty well for what it's designed for but for full timers um, not so much the CVT Mount Shasta uh, extreme that was an excellent tent um, but that thing was actually heavier than this for one and it was a little bit more set up which I didn't like um, and then the one before that was the Tapui uh, which that was like back in when they first started so there was of course issues with that tent and it was like 800 bucks at the time but 800 bucks for that rooftop tent I think was pretty well worth it um, but this is definitely worth every penny of it and the big thing that I love about this thing too is that we can leave our extra mattress in there, our sleeping bag in there, uh, Surface Pro, we can have some clothes up in those things. So pretty much everything stays in there. I just pull the pillow out from the inside and then if we have the diesel heater, of course the ducting comes out and I shut it down. So it's like literally two minutes set up or less and the same for tearing it down. So if you like this video and the information that I gave you, please help us out. Click the like and subscribe to our channel uh, for other gear updates and reviews. We'll see you next time.